Hello, welcome back to Chatomics. This is Tommy. Now I have over 10 years experience of computational biology and today I'm going to talk about which language to use R or Python for bioinformatics. I think I got this question many times before. So which language to use if you want to learn bioinformatics, R or Python? So in this video, I will talk about uh, my experience and w uh, hopefully it can help you to make the right decision and to choose the right language uh, in your uh, situation. Okay, so this is my own story. So I started learning actually first Unix commands 12 years ago. I then started to learn Python by uh, reading this book called Python for Absolute Beginners. So it was a great book, uh, however, <laughs> It didn't actually uh, solve my practical bioinformatic problems that I had during the lab. Now, I did actually <laughs> first print this uh, print Hello World uh, after I learned those Python in a uh, syntax. But why? Like it's not that useful at that time, because at that time I had a lot of tables and spreadsheets to analyze during my uh, PhD uh, time, and learning. For example, pandas, uh, which is uh, a, a, a library to uh, to deal with uh, data frames in Python, was just not that intuitive to me. So uh, then I found R. So R is a statistical programming language, and it's perfect for rectangular tables, and it has built-in support for data frames. Uh, and especially with the more recent uh, tidyverse ecosystem. It's just very easy to do complex data wrangling with only a few lines of code. And moreover, you know, if the ggplot2, which is uh, one package from Tidyverse, if you know how to use ggplot2, you can really make beautiful figures. And I think it's still much better uh, than the figures made in Python. So that's how actually I uh, started to switch to learn how to use R. And more importantly, for bioinformatics, uh, R has this bioconductor ecosystem, which contains thousands of packages for bioinformatics. For example, you can simply just search uh, data analysis, for example, whole genome data analysis, bioconductor, and you will find packages to deal with uh, that data type. Or you can just search, okay, chip seq analysis, Bioconductor, and you will find packages for uh, ChIP-seq data analysis. And for example, uh, for bulk RNA sequencing analysis, the Bioconductor package called DSEQ2 is still probably the most widely used uh, package. And although very recently there is a Python version called PyDSEQ2 that is available for Python users. So on the other hand, Python is more like a general programming language and uh, has its, its very, uh, strength in deep learning, but may have fewer, for example, pre-built bioinformatics packages. So some people feel it is more intuitive uh, than R, but some other people actually think R is easier to learn. So it really depends on uh, your flavor. So you want to actually probably uh, just learn both languages and see which one makes more sense to you. Uh, in addition, R has other problems. Uh, one of the big problems is that you have to load all the data into memory in R. Uh, in Python, for example, you can actually read files. Uh, if it's a big file, you can read files file line by line and process line by line. So you, you can have very uh, small uh, memory uh, footprint. So when the data is big, uh, you really need a lot of RAM to do data analysis in R. For example, like for whole genome bisulfite sequencing data, uh, because uh, each row could be just one CPG site, so you can have like 20 million of rows, uh, that's like CPG sites from the whole genome, and you can have columns, maybe 50 samples. Like now you, if you have single cell uh, by, uh, whole genome bisulfite sequencing, you can even have like millions of uh, cells. So it's, it's just not practical to load it into memory. Right? But there is also a more recent uh, data structure called delayed array to solve this problem uh, in R. So instead of load all the 
data into memory at once, they stay on disk, only calculate when, it, uh, when it's necessary. Okay. So the, the summary is that Python and R uh, both have their own pros and cons. So if you can, learn both and use uh, one that is suitable for the task at hand. And moreover, like a know, knowing well of one language actually can help you to learn other language a lot easier because although the syntaxes are different uh, among different languages, but the logics are actually the same. For example, the flow controls, like how to use if, else if, um, uh, those are conditions. So they are actually very similar among different languages. Uh, for example, like I am aware that another language called Julia is very popular now. It's also very fast and uh, uh, very uh, similar to uh, Python in terms of syntax. Uh, it's a very powerful language to learn. So uh, if you know, for example, both Python and R, it's not probably that hard for you to pick up another language such as Julia or Rust for bioinformatics. Okay. So the, con the conclusion is that, so if you are a biologist who wants to do a quick analysis with a pre-built package, and if you can find such packages in, uh, in Bioconductor, I think R is better. But if you want to be a really serious programmer for developing algorithms, or you uh, want to uh, deal with data types that, uh, like, for example, there's no packages in, uh, in R that can do that, you want to probably use Python, right? And also Python is also better probably for deep learning uh, based data analysis, okay? So that's just like my uh, recommendation and I hope it's useful for you and uh, you can write, you can make the right decision to choose the language to, to learn, okay? So that's it for today. Uh, I hope it's helpful for you. Click subscribe if you like this content and Thank you, I'll see you next time.